It's certainly not all in a one play style at this point in time, as Lucian's still going to come through. So it is still going to be an AD mid laner, but not Trist the Lucian instead for perks. I think that Still if you're chilling down there as they trade scuttle crabs, mid lane is the obvious target, and Jensen pushed up. Hugging the left hand side, but he's got no mana. He's got nowhere to go. Perch going to keep putting the damage in, and Jensen honestly should just not give these hist away. Let him die. No reason to flash. I don't know how he lives here. He's going to be revealed. He's going to buy some time, and he's Boiler actually going to force <laughs> Perks to flash as well. I that don't. One but it does mean he's going to be a little bit slower for the rest of this one. Nice hook's going to come through, but they're going to save the chop. There weren't any more damage coming across, and actually big hits going. Nicely done by Tactical and Core JJ. He just opened fire with a mini wave in front of him. Bo bottom dive maybe set up here. They chunked him down to 50%. It's doable. All right, we've heard about top dive. How about bottom dive? They're going to be flay backwards, but still so low on health. Horsey's on backwards, but Summoner Hill keeps him safe. Re-engage might look good. Vulcan's hook going to be dodged to the side, but Fudge has arrived. Spit right back out of Santorin, but still, the fight continues. Tactical low on health, though far into the backline. Flay backwards, still finds Ven, finds that kill. Blabber gets one, Blabber runs away. Jensen takes him back down. Fudge forced to flash away out of the turret, but they've got no mana. they got very little health. Alphari going to lead the charge, gets the empowered stun. Charge comes across, and there is all the kills coming across. Team Liquid. Rich off of this one, and that feels really good as a bottom lane. Santorin's got a red buff, uh, plus he has two components already. Uh, for the, well, three people versus perks. How does he yep. get out of this one? The wave comes in, make the dive a little bit easier, and perks no longer have anything active to do on this game. Perks got first blood, and since then, it's been all downhill for Cloud9. Really, really strong, proactive early game. Garner gank, though. All right, looking for the attempt. Blabber, they're going to find the stun and spits them right back out. No problem. Finds the stun, puts the ulti now back on a core JJ. Has flash, has exhaust, played backwards, puts on the shield. And the slows might just be enough. Core JJ walks out. Not going to be a problem. However, Perks is here. Yeah, here we go. Dive commits. Ult comes across. Going to be core JJ burning his stopwatch to buy a few seconds, which may be worthwhile since Vulcan's going to die. Vulcan's going to drop. Tactical and core combined for a single kill. It's time for the second round. Sven picks up one. Perk's going to find the second. And Blabber had aggregates to walk away. One kill at least for the TL side, but otherwise plus one kill, plus one plate. Hmm, solo laners are coming to try and collect exit kills here, but uh, let's see. Jensen has flash. Yeah, Perk's playing away from Sven, so Shocker could ever hit two. He's going to look for it right now. Has to flash, but held on the entire time. Oh, they know. He's on a ward. Hook's going to land. This could be really good damage. Can they finish the kill? The lantern of the wall means that's almost certainly going to happen. Korja J will not burn the exhaust. He will die for recalling on a ward. Vulcan, that auto is a little scary, but they get the kill successfully over to Perk. So now Sven can look for a slow and an ult even. Tactical is arrowable. They're going to land it. Can he get in range for the hook in time? Though he slowed down. Ulti comes across. They find the hook, but is the re-engage enough? Play backwards. Perks is here. Great kill picked up. A 4v1 is a victory, and Cloud9 get the gold back under 2,000. Yeah, I, he was probably thinking, oh, maybe I flashed this arrow, but Core JJ told him, hey, uh, everybody else is here too. They just killed me inside the pit. So uh, you're probably dead anyways with the Skarner coming, and Blabber was uh -oh. going to be able to cut him off. Answer, possibly? Flay by some time. Heckerman to the back line. Vulcan going to flash now, but Perk's nearly going to drop. He had a 200 HP. Easy kill for Santorin, who's already got Divine Sunderer at 11 minutes in. Vulcan going to drop now as well. A bloody game. 8-6 to six already. Team Liquid counterpunch for the 2-0. Can they put some more pressure on this tower? Remember, they just used the Rift-Hailed mid to get those extra two turret plates, and they don't want to let these recalls go off. Tom Kench can devour to reset tower aggro here, uh, even though they have... Oh! Flash, ult, pull him out of the turret. The whole team was spread apart. Shotgun buys some time, and Core JJ spits him right back out. Zven gets two autos across. Still two kills come across. It was a great attempt. Bro. I love Divine Sunder completed, as you said, a long time ago. <laughs> so he's going to just murder uh, objective after objective for them. And Team Liquid, just uh, have faith me. in your jungler to get a good positioning there. He will deliver the shockwave, and that will deliver the team fight. Meanwhile, with this early lead, they can just Good, so it makes sense. Yeah. I also think, uh, well, maybe we get some action here. There's a croc in the bush. Oh, he's waiting for the flank play. Perk's still going to chase in a Jensen. Shockwave that's going to be flashed on. Now a flash to disengage. And Vulcan going to be such an easy target. They find the stun, and they're going to knock him down. Jensen lands the spell at the right time. And now Perks, a little bit of 1v2, decides it's probably time to run away. But Blabber's coming around, so maybe he can keep them interested. Because, well, more TL is coming. The horse comes in, finds a fear. Arrow's not going to land. Centaurin kills under the turret. And a quick stun, but Centaurin. He is just too tanky, and Core JJ drops turret, makes him just survive it, you know, splits him out, not a problem at all. And again, Team Liquid getting the better of every fight we've ever had. I 
I can only imagine the feeling of safety of having a core JJ Tom Kent. has to burn his ult to do so because he doesn't have ability power. No Night Harvester or Rocket Belt to make that nicer. And hey, at least one turret goes on the board. Cloud9, they have six kills. They have a single turret, but Team Liquid are already knocking down at Tier 2 in bot lane. Whether or not this wave dies won't matter. The Herald will be there regardless. They do, in fact, knock down Tier 2, which means they get the guaranteed yeah, target. Yeah, I mean, these tanks are going to be, or at least these beefy frontliners, as we're seeing, you know, Bramble Vest come through. Right two, I'm sorry, we had we had Flowers <laughs> talk about how the horses have more legs. Uh, and, you know, TL have way more guns. You know, you, you brought a uh, team fighting in the early game. Yep, Team Liquid pick up the secondary turret easily here. They're transitioning control wards already. Burn some some defenses that way first with some big thresh plays. Yeah. Uh, and they, they're able to focus somebody down with Perks and Sven. All right, decent first sense of damage, okay. though. Honestly, yeah, Santorin's down to, like, 40%. Well done. Perks goes forward, blasts them apart. Core JJ barely got the shield off in time, but they still find a stun. And these health bars are low. They pull back in Jensen, and he is alone without his tax shelter. Woo! Out goes the horses in Cloud9. They found the opening. Perks put the shots down. TL had to run away. And finally, after 20 minutes of effort, Cloud9 gets something back on the board. The Baron, that would be big. Santorin has Ghost and no ulti. They can see him walk in, and they have a five on four. Can they make it in? They first QSS comes across. They find the team fight five on four, and the back line is perks. It's a flash out of the pit. Santorin though has no way to get out though, and the reengage is going to be good enough. They will kill back Fudge and Tactical's firing off, but it's going to be enough. It's going to be enough. They knock down another one as Blaver drops, and inside the pit is Team Liquid. Sven is dead as well. Faith for the leash, buddy. Team Liquid, the team fight, and the Baron. Yep, and they're probably going to chase down Perks as well. There's a blast going here. Does he get out? Cancel. Yeah, the calling's just enough. He's going to walk away with his life. Ultimately, though, Team Liquid. Yeah, Bari will finish up that secondary tower with no problem on the top side of the map. Baron buff and powered Renekton. Easy play there. And the rest of the squad has another minion, two more full minion waves uh, to try and get some actual damage done on these inhibitor towers before getting the reset for Ocean Soul. All right, 45 seconds left on Red Bull Baron. We know all the Tier 2 turrets are gone now. Bot going to be left alone mid lane under fire fast, though. That's going to drop. The stun means nothing from Sven. I'm not sure why they even went for it. If no one's willing to go forward. Hook's going to land. Good damage on Hecarim. They have QSS. Or sorry, they don't have one. The horsey charge goes around, and oh, he gets oh. saved. you got to be kidding me. He spits him right back out. Good by Perks to find a kill. Corey today still the target. He's going to drop, actually. The fight is close. It's a 3v3 right now, as long as they can kite. Blabber finds the stun. Alfari finds himself with 200 health right now, and they might find that chase down. Stop Watch for Blyber, thought he's going to get bursted down. Tactical, he's going to open up, but he's going to be stunned. And it's a 2v2. Now Perks Ooh. has to get away, but he's been slowed by the dissonance. And Sven makes sure that they can claim that kill. Sorry, Jensen makes sure they can claim that kill. And in a 2v1 push, it is now Blabber against the World Tank. Skarner is going to try his best, but he's down three levels on each of them. Finds a single stun, tries to knock down the minions. First turret's going to drop. Support spawns now as well. So lane's definitely better than a jungler and a support. But with the wave gone, Cloud9 will keep their base alive. But look at that timer, Kobe. It's your favorite. It's 40 seconds to the Drake. It's time to recall. <laughs> it truly is. No reason to oh, risk getting Last it. auto here from Orianna gets that one back alive. Stun on a perch, burns QSS, damage on Alfari, nearly knocks him down, barely staying alive though, but Vulcan's gonna be the target, explosive cast by some more time, onto the back line goes Hecarim, gonna be trying for Fudge to keep those two, his team alive, but he cannot get that one either, the chase down already comes across, and A, it's too little too late, Cloud9, they may have team fought well, but they cannot fight against those bags of gold, so many items inventory, and Team Liquid, positioning or not, will take that fight all the same. They are tankier, they deal more damage, and honestly, they're just gonna win this one now. Blabber buys a little bit of time, but there's a mini wave committed to the mid lane. They'll take a second inhibitor just for show, and the Nexus turrets will now fall. Team Liquid will end their first round, Robin, worse than they wanted at five and four. However, they are still in control of their destiny. They are still in position to keep making playoffs with nine games to go until the mid-season showdown. Team Liquid takes down Cloud9. And it does speak to how close the league 